All right, so passive components are the most common components you'll be soldering by hand. They're very easy to do, but they're also usually the smallest components that you'll be working with. So here I'll be working with the hardest type of passive, which are resistors, and they are difficult because they are often smaller than your other passive components. Um, so I'm going to be doing R5 through R8 and R11 through R14 here, all of which are 330 ohm resistors, uh, which is right here. I should have about 200 of them. Um, yeah, so let me show you what these look like. I only buy stack pole resistors uh, with 1% tolerant resistance. Um, so yeah, they go on like this. Uh, these are usually the third types of components that I'll do. Typically, the first are QFN components like this that only have pads on the bottom. The second components I'll do are the very difficult components like this, an LQFP64, which is very time consuming and very easy to get wrong. And then after that, I will move to other low profile components that are simpler, like these passive resistors over here. So resistors and capacitors are the most common passives. And I tend to like to do them all in one big go. For example, I will usually take care of all my 330 ohm resistors all at once. And then I'll move on to my 470 ohm. And then from there I'll go to my 770 ohm and so on and so forth until all of them are done. So I'll do all of my 330 ohm capacitors in parallel. And the way I do that is first I find all the pads that require 330 ohm or resistors. Uh, in, that, in this case, it's these pads here. And what I'll do, I'm right-handed, so on the right pad, I'll just put a solder bubble on each one. And I approach every surface mount component the same way, except for QFN. And that is, I do one or a couple of solder joints just to hold the component in place. Then I'll do my electrical joints and I'll rework my original joints that were to hold it in place. Um, so now how many do I have here? Eight. So I'm going to grab eight of these resistors. And luckily they're all close together. So there's Two. It is, you, you can put these components in, which, I, oh, nice, I got like five at once. So that's seven. Oh, I lost one. Uh, you can put these components in backwards if you want, but just because I am nitpicky and I like to show my boards off to employers, and potential new members to the robotics club. I always put the component with the resistor value facing up and I try to make them align so that the resistor codes are all facing the same direction. So what I'll do with my soldering iron is I'll take my passive, I'll heat up one pad and insert the component that's not a great joint. That's actually a cold joint. You can tell because it has a tail. If it has a tail, you have a cold joint. Um, cold joint is kind of a catch-all term for any kind of bad solder joint, although typically it refers to joints that don't have enough flux proportional to their temperature. There we go. That one's good. That's a good joint. And I'll just go through and I'll populate all of these uh, resistors. Yeah, that's a good joint. Get them as straight as I can. Get the resistor codes all facing the same direction. And this definitely does take some practice. Like all of this SMD work is not 
super easy. Yeah, I've been doing this for uh, about three or four years now. Not oh, four years now. Um, but I've been doing a lot of SMD soldering. And steady hands. Steady hands are key. Here's the seventh one. I'll flip it over. There we go. That one, I don't like the alignment. There we go. That's better. And I should have another resistor floating around somewhere. Ah, uh, it fell off the board. It is right here. And there we are. Now all eight of those resistors are held in place. So what I'll do is I'll turn the board around. And I'll just get the other side of them really quick. And this is the exact same technique for resistors, capacitors, or any two pin component, SMD component on a PCB. We'll use this exact same method. And these are much better. Oh, that one's bubbly. See, I can finagle some of the solder off. No, no, it's a cold joint. We're going to have to go back to that one. This one is not a fan of this joint. That's also a cold joint. That one's bad. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Okay, so I've got three joints over here that I want to rework. And Rework is pretty simple on these. Just a bit of flux. Let's press some of the flux out of here. This flux pen is absolute trash. And then just tap them. Tap. 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 I'll do this one too. Tap. And there we go. Those are good now. See how see how they have a reflection to them? See how they're shiny? If I adjust my light here, you could probably be able to see it really good. Ah, that doesn't really help. Um, a shiny joint is good. A dull looking joint is bad. Now all of my joints here are pretty shiny. So I know none of these have micro fractures or micro cracks in them. They also don't have gross, crusty flux on the surface, which is good. That's kind of uh, how you want your joints to look. So none of these are bad joints, and I'm actually going to keep them the way they are. But typically, the original joint um, that I use to hold the component in place, I'll often rework that. But all of these ones seem good, and they have a good texture to them. It's nice and rough. Um, so yeah, that's how you do two-pin. SMD components. So using the techniques demonstrated, I was able to finish every surface mount component on this board. The only th other thing I want to say is for passive components like these polar capacitors here, as well as diodes like this one, and LEDs like these, uh, keep in mind the polarity as you're soldering them. Other than that, the skills covered in uh, this tutorial should be sufficient to build just about any surface mount PCB.